Chase, the Wii U consoles are fading into the void. Only you can resurrect them. Their nans cry out for your magical touch. Well, when the heavens speak, you gotta listen. Let's resurrect these consoles from their digital grave. All right, divine intervention aside, let's talk about why the Wii U's are crying for help. These consoles are often plagued by a notorious NAND failure, the EMMC. And it's kind of like the console's way of saying, I've fallen and I can't get up. Help me! Help! Me! And that's where this little hero comes in. This custom PCB I designed makes this whole process so much easier. Thanks to the folks at All PCB. This error code right here? Nah, man. We're gonna take care of this right now. Now I talked to All PCB and I told them that I know some of you guys would love to fix your Wii U. And so I had them make a whole bunch. There is a limited supply. And if you want one of these custom boards, stay to the end of the video and I'll tell you how to get one. This is the board that I made for the mod chip. This board is based off of the diffuse mod chip for the Wii U. At the heart of this is the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, obviously there's no Pico here, but the Pico sits right here. And we have the lines corresponding down to these points here. So let's install a Pico on this thing. First thing we need, solder. Pico, let's get it installed. Okay, connect Pico. Perfect. It's done. Alcohol. Gotta have the alcohol. We need more alcohol. More alcohol. Perfect. Oh, this Pico is gonna have the craziest hangover tomorrow. It's done. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty fancy. I think this is gonna work. Next thing's next. We have to install the wires on the bottom. Now, the original creator of this defuse mod chip actually did design a PCB, but it was more of like a permanent install into the Wii U, and that wasn't exactly what I was going for because we really just want the Pico to temporarily be connected to the Wii U to get it to boot in a minute so we can reinstall the EMMC. I was looking at this more as a like, hey, this is a repair tool. We could use this to fix we use. Now, connecting the wires. Now, the only thing problematic about this board is that I did not group these together in the way that they are on the actual pinout. So <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm actually not. All right, wires are pre-trimmed. All of these connections are basically going to follow in tandem the picture on screen here. So let's get to wiring. Okay, so here's the Pico board in all its glory. It's got all the connections that we need to glitch the processor on the Wii U, and this should just work. Now this Wii U project wouldn't be possible without all PCB. All PCB sponsored this video, and I'm so excited because it's my first PCB. I've never designed one before until now. And yeah, technically I have done this Wii U board mod before, but the thing is, this board just makes it just a tad bit more simpler and a little bit more compact. Yeah, I know it's a square, but come on, it's my first PCB. If you happen to be a new customer and you just designed your first PCB and you wanna get it prototyped, for new customers, they offer a $1 PCB prototype. And to be honest, I think the quality of this board is incredible, considering I work with PCBs literally on a daily basis. This is honestly a great first project. If you're gonna try creating your first PCB or you wanna print out some of these, use my Gerber files down in the description. There'll be a link to them somewhere down there. The special thing with all PCB is they actually do blind vias and they do through hole vias as well as pads on the circuit board. But if you decide you wanna prototype your first PCB, the link will be in the description. So now let's go to the Wii U and try to get this thing apart. Uh, here's our Wii U. Actually, this is not the Wii U. This is the Wii U. So this is the Wii U that typically always fails and it's usually this chip right here. This chip is the EMMC. Come to find out, this is actually a Samsung chip. And I just realized that this Wii U likely doesn't need its EMMC replaced. But come on, I designed a whole PCB for this. Okay, so what we need to do, we have to get this heatsink off first. Then we can get access to all the points that we need to solder to, to get this Wii to boot into the minute menu. There we go. And up and out she comes. Now, here's our Wii U. So what we need to do first, let's decide on this chip. First the flux, then the hot air. And the EMMC is off. First thing we need to do, grab the wick and we are going to desolder all these old balls. Old balls? Gross. We want to try to wick these pads as flat as humanly possible without destroying any of the solder mask, which I think we're good. Alcohol for cleaning. Oh no, I see something, something awful. We took up some solder mask right there. Eh, it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. The board's flat, the chip will solder just fine. It's not gonna be fine, ever! <laughs> is what it is, no worries. All right, I will get back to this as soon as I have the chip. My chip is in my backpack and I don't have it here. 
It's 11.11 right now. Should I make a wish? I wish that the Wii U would get done tonight. Okay, grab the stencils. Let's see here, EMMC. Oh, I see it. Here it is, the EMMC stencil. All right, let's go. All right. And I am back. Now, I have here our new EMMC. I have the stencil, and I purchased one of these tool reballing platforms. I absolutely love these things. They, they make reballing so much easier. And it also comes with these spreading tools. All right, so what I like to do is I like to get these chips kind of uh, in place in the corner here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually reball this chip. The reason why I say that is because these solder balls typically have a uh, higher melting temperature. And uh, when we put some lower melting solder on these chips, it just makes the whole process that much easier when reinstalling them. So let's get started. So first, of course, you can't cover gets the flux. I don't know what accent I was going for. And solder, because we need to clear these balls off. And we want to wick these balls as flat as humanly possible, just to make our entire process that much easier. Now we'll take the alcohol and we're going to clean off the chip. Once we clean it, that's good. Now let's put it in the center of the platform. Now I'm going to grab my super dirty stencil and we are going to try to line up where just like that. And I'm going to try to clean off the stencil because this is low key kind of nasty. Now I don't know if you can hear this, but I moved my YouTube recording studio to a garage. And in that garage, we sometimes get crickets. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it's making noise. So I'll be right back. Probably didn't kill it, but it's done. Back to reballing. All right, time to reball the chip. And perfect, boom. Now we take the tweezers and we are going to heat this thing up just like that. All right, there we go, just like that. And then now yeah, it, it does kind of look like the chip is a little like uh, weird. So I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol, put it on the chip. We're gonna hit it with the toothbrush. We just wanna clean this chip up so it looks real nice. Just go over it a couple more times and I think it should be good to go. There we go, looks better. Now let's add the flux. Let's now add our chip. So our chip is going to sit something like this. Oh, that's nice. This must be a later version of the Wii U because it has the white silk screen for this size EMMC. So amazing. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and reflow this thing. There it is, baby, right there. Let's give it a little nudge, a little jiggle. Make sure that it's 100% floated. There we go. Amazing. We installed the chip. Now, on to the Pico. Now, if we follow our install diagram that I made in basically Microsoft Paint. <laughs> this should just work with no problems. Oh yeah, look at that botched soldering job. But yeah, it, I mean, realistically, this should just work. I, I can't imagine there's any issues with this. Now, go on over here. There are going to be two points right here that we need to solder to. Put a little bit of flux down. All right, cool. Solder the blue, then solder the purple. All right, now, we gotta solder three more wires, and then we should have somewhat success here. There we go. That's connected. Now, last but not least, to solder our 3.3 and our ground for the Pico. Solder the ground and our 3.3. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have our Wii U Pico Diffuse Mod Chip board soldered in. Now, what I like to do with the Wii U is I like to take off this plate here that's uh, on the back or on the bottom of the board. That way, we can go ahead and connect up our heat sink so that the main processor doesn't overheat. So what we can do is we can kind of put that there like this, and we can very carefully flip this Wii U board around, and me holding it there did absolutely nothing. All right, so now we can put our heat sink on, and now we can put our screws in. All right, Wii U is just about prepped. Now we need the front panel, and connect the front panel. We also need the fan. Connect the fan. Fan connected. Flip the Wii U over nice and carefully. Now the very next thing you need is a one gig SD card. And uh, I will leave a link below for the entire tutorial on how to do everything here. Since I already have it done, I'm just gonna explain it. Basically what you do is you are just writing the first couple bytes of the hacked boot one that basically you want the Pico to glitch and boot off of. That's the whole point of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this SD card in the Wii U, just like that. All right, now we wanna make sure that our all of our cables and things are connected, but we also want 
the Pico off the board a little bit and we need to connect a USB cable and the power cable for our Wii U. Now, before we do anything, we need to power the Pico and program it. So let's plug the cable in. All right, now that we have the Pico up, let's go ahead and program the Pico with Diffuse. And here we go, Pico Diffuse. Perfect, we programmed the Pico. Now the very next thing we need to do is we need to check our device and okay cool Pico is showing up. Let's go to device manager and see if we can find the COM port for this. Alright, COM port is COM5 in my case. It will be different if you do decide you want to try this at home. Now let's go to serial. We're going to change the speed to 115200 and change this to COM5. Alright, now when we plug in the Wii U, any insane amount of luck it should work. And should it sometimes automatically start? Now we have to hit the power button. Okay, amazing. It's glitching. So when we see stuff like this happening, it means it is working. So we'll just let this go for a moment and hopefully it will boot with the mod chip. And we are in. We got it. Wii U has been hacked with the board. All right. So now we should be able to uh, do a couple of different things. So first things first, let's go down to backup and restore. And then we are going to first go down to erase MLC mounting LLC SLC. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Eject power, yes. Now, let's see if we can. I think what we need to do. So, I have a NAND image. I actually have a NAND dump from the original chip. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to restore that. Um, but let's go back to the main menu. And we want to boot the iOS image, which, because I actually have it set up right now for the ISFS hacks, I think is what it's called. So, the entire point of this whole thing is basically, if you want to replace your EMMC, let's say you have a hacked Nintendo. To Wii U, you have an AND backup, you have everything, but you want to replace your EMMC because you don't want to experience a brick in the future with a bad EMMC. So the whole point of this is pretty much once you replace your EMMC, you need the diffuse mod chip in order to boot back into minute. So the only way to do that is this. But once we get here, then we can install this new thing called ISFX hacks or whatever it's whatever it's called. Let's switch over to the Wii U. And we can't see anything over here, but if we switch, okay now cool we get to see things so let's go ahead and continue and can be installed this actually did have its isfs hacks that's what it is basically this is going to be installed onto the nand and so then we won't need the pico anymore in order to boot into this menu menu so we can you know do whatever we want with a console so let's go ahead and hit continue install yes proceed and it's going to install it okay so this is what we need to do we need to get the otp dub bin and put it on this sd card boot into minute it with the mod chip and then we need to install isfs hacks and then we can proceed with restoring the NAND. so let's do that let's connect the wii u sd card and now we need to get rid of that otp.bin and then we we're going to probably replace it with this one yes replace done eject perfect now let's put it back in the wii u we just have to wait for this wii u to be hacked again all right wii u has been hacked now we need to go down and boot ios ios.image all right it's booting now we need to switch to the wii u so we can actually see what's going on so the wii u is on now all right so let's continue and since the otp.bin is correct it should work this time install yes proceed okay error cannot find okay obviously there's something not on this sd card or something okay power off well you really can't make this stuff up so i dumped the opt from the minute menu even though i had the correct opt and it didn't make any sense that was the thing that was missing so i dumped it and uh, apparently the one that i had wasn't good enough and the wii u didn't like it so anyways after i dumped it i was able to successfully flash isf as hacks which is fantastic all right now that we are here we don't need the mod chip anymore except for one thing we want it for serial logs so let's go ahead and power the wii u off because basically we're just going to try to restore the nand that was originally on it but like we replaced the chip and so we're gonna like take the files and you get the thing all right sd card Let's verify that we have the correct files. We have CPROM. We're going to take the SLC.bin and the SLCCMPT and we're going to plop them. Oh, are you serious? 
I need 700 megabytes to copy this? All right, apps. Wait a minute, I have The Incredibles as a GameCube game, and we are going to get rid of that. Totally legal copy, because I owned it at one point in my life. You are a smelly pirate hooker. Okay, so let's get these files copied over. So now we'll just wait for them to copy, and then we'll get it back into the Wii U, and hopefully things will just work. So we got the SD card back in the Wii U, but I forgot one thing. Let's connect the Pico one last time. We're gonna reprogram it with this Pico serial. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to allow the Pico to just output serial instead of actually doing mod chip stuff because we wanna see what the Wii U is doing while we are programming it or doing whatever. That way we can kind of have like a, a backup log and see exactly what's going on on the Wii U just in case something freezes or does something weird. So let's get this session. Let's go to backup and restore. And shoot, let's uh, restore SLC. Yes, failed to open, failed to restore. Nice. Okay, let's do the SLC CMPT. That also failed. <laughs> Why are things not working? All right, so since I can't restore my NAND, we're gonna have to create a brand new NAND and sometimes this can be problematic. So let's try to do it. We need to go to MLC restore and downloader. Okay, so I downloaded the MLC data and I put it into a folder at the root of the SD card called waffle uh, underscore install. Plug the Wii U in, Wii U is plugged in. Turn on the Wii U. All right, let's take a look at the screen. So let's go to, well, since we already erased the NAND and did all of that, we should just be able to go to patch SD and boot iOS SLC. And of course we want to connect our Pico again. Let's restart the session so we can see what comes out of the Pico. Okay, so notice how the Wii U stopped on the other on the actual screen, but here it's actually doing stuff. So that's the whole reason why we hold on. Ball SD card waffle and start open failed. Hmm. What did I miss here? Maybe because I had Waffle Core still in there. Okay, let's reconnect the SD card to the computer and maybe just get rid of Waffle Core. And then we'll try again. But while I'm here, I'm gonna make a backup of my SD card and I'm gonna just try a different SD card because maybe it just doesn't like my SD card. Okay, I switched to a different SD card. Got everything copied over, insert into the Wii U and plug into power and turn it on. Okay, things are doing things, perfect. All right, now let's go down here and hit start. Okay, it's doing things. Why is it failing to open? Why is it failing? I've never seen this before. So I figured it out and it's like one of the stupidest things. Well, if you see it says waffle install with two L's. And then you look at, well, I changed it now, but it was just one L. If you go back in the video, you'll see it would just be one L. It's supposed to be two. That was the problem. All right, so let's eject. Well, I'll plug this. We're gonna plug in the Pico. We're gonna plug in the SD card. As you can see, I'm like losing my sanity right now. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Plug the Wii U in. So let's restart sesh. Hit some buttons. All right, let's do it. All right, is it gonna work this time? Is it gonna work? I think it worked. Yeah, I found it. All right, now it's gonna try to install things. It's installing titles. So let's hang out for a few. Much, much, much later. It looks like we got it. Now uh, let's turn off the Wii U, unplug the SD card, and we need to remove the setup MLC. Delete. It should work now. Eject. All right. Unplug the SD card. Plug it back into the Wii U. Plug the Wii U in. Plug back in the Pico. And then, restart session. Switch it over to the Wii U. Power the Wii U, on. Wii U is doing things. Okay, and we should have a screen. Yes, we do. Okay, so we should be able to go to patch SD and boot SLC. This is the moment of truth, folks. Let's hit start. And if it works, we're gonna boot into the Wii U OS. <laughs> it's working! We did it! The Wii U is fixed! <laughs> We did it! We did it! It's over! The wait is over! The Wii U works! We replaced the EMMC. Now, if you want one of these Wii U boards, you have two options. Thanks to all PCB, they sent me out 30 of these boards. I used two of them and I gave one away. And so I have 27 to give to you guys. So if you want one of these boards, this is what you have to do. You need to send me a letter. You're gonna send it to my PO box, which is going to be the address here on the screen and down in the description. Of course, I don't expect these to stay in stock very long. So I will also leave the Gerber files to create these boards in the description. So you need to take an envelope, 
put a return label in it that will go right back to you. And I will take one of these boards and I will slip it in the package. I will close it and slap your return label on it and I will send it back out to you. And remember, I'm giving these away completely free. And if you made it this far, I know some of you are probably wondering, Chase, where's the one terabyte flash drive? Is the one terabyte flash drive gonna happen? Is it Micro Center or is it a Xiaomi drive? My friends, the time has come. In this very package are two 512 gig EMMCs. And in my hands, is the flash drive we're going to be using. So if you want to see the one terabyte flash drive video, it's coming to a YouTube near you.